Hi, this is Nat, and today we're going to be uh, combining a bunch of skills that you may or may not have seen before um, and using proportional equations to help us calculate degrees for a pie chart so we can see how pie charts are accurately made. Some of you have probably used the method before where you try to make a pie chart by hand, and it feels pretty hard because you know, the only thing you can do is just, you know, divide it up and you say, well, if I divide it, I can make quarters and then maybe if I can divide those in half and make eighths and then maybe I can do, I don't know, thirds of each wedge and things like that if I wanted, say, 24. This is a really inefficient and inaccurate way of making a pie chart. So the biggest thing that I want to stress is that we are not going to be doing this. This is awful. A much easier way of making a pie chart is to use a protractor to measure out your wedges with uh, degrees and proportions, which we'll talk about in a second, to help you figure out how many degrees each wedge should be. And it actually ends up being pretty easy. To illustrate how this works, let's start with a sample bit of data. You're going to be making pie charts based on survey data that you collect about your name uh, that you're suggesting for the baby. Um, but for this one, we're just going to use favorite color as an example. The first thing you need to know is how many people responded in each way. Um, these are eventually going to become the different sections of your pie chart. And the second thing you need to know is how many total people responded. So we're going to look at this and say, okay, 8, 5, 2, and 1. We had a total of 16 responses, which is an important thing to know when we start calculating our pie wedges. We're going to use each of these response data sets uh, with a proportion to turn it into a degree, a number of degrees for a circle. Um, so anytime you use a proportion, a proportion, one way of thinking of it is just a way of changing a fraction into another fraction. So what we need originally is the fraction of responses that responded each way. So if I think about red, 8 out of 16 people responded for red. That's 8 out of 16, which I might also think of as 1 half. Jumping down to blue, our total responses were 5 out of 16. That's the fraction of the responses for blue. Yellow was 2 out of 16. 2 out of 16 could be reduced to 1 8 if we wanted to. And finally, pink. Pink is going to be 1 out of 16. So we're going to begin with these initial fractions of responses. So again, one use for a proportion is to make an equivalent fraction for a fraction that you already have. Um, a proportion is an equation that always takes a specific shape. Basically, it's always going to be a fraction equals another fraction. For our pie charts, it's always going to be the fraction of responses is going to be equal to the fraction of the circle. So jumping back, we can see that red had half the responses. So uh, the fraction of responses was one half, and I want to say that that is equal to the fraction of the circle. Now this is the part that we don't know. It's the part that we want to know. Um, so we need a fraction for the circle. Um, the nice thing is that we know what the circle is made up of. A circle is made up of 360 degrees. So when you think about a circle, 360 degrees is the measurement of a circle. So essentially if half the responses were, I like red the best, half of the circle should be 360 degrees. This is actually, or sorry, half of the circle should be filled with the red pie wedge for the pie chart. Um, and that's going to be half of 360 degrees. This one would be an easy one to do without calculations, but it's a nice way to illustrate how the proportion works. So let's take a look. When I write my 
equation, I'm going to say, well, I don't know how many degrees out of 360 this should be. So I might say degrees D out of a total of 360 degrees. That's going to be the fraction for the circle. The D represents the number of degrees since I don't know it yet theoretically. And if I solve this proportion, I'll get that D value. That gets us to the actual solving of the proportional equation. And luckily for us, proportions are always solved in exactly the same way. When you see a proportion, this fraction equals another fraction equation, um, we are always going to solve it by doing something called cross-multiplying. And what cross-multiplying means is that you are going to multiply in an X shape across the equal sign. You're going to multiply 1 times 360 in this case, and you're going to multiply D times 2. Well, 1 times 360 is just 360. And D times 2 we really can't do much with except say, that well, that's D times 2, or 2 Ds. 2 times d, and we're going to leave our equal sign in the center. From here, this should actually look pretty familiar. This is a standard one-step equation. I'm saying that if I multiply d by 2, it makes 360, and I can undo that to solve the equation. So I undo multiplying by 2 by dividing both sides by 2. These d's go away. Hopefully this looks pretty familiar. And then D equals 360 divided by 2, which is 180. In this case, what that tells me is that my circle, which is half red, or should have half of it filled in with red, means that there will be 180 degrees of red in my pie chart, or my circle. That was pretty easy, and really could have been done without any cross-multiplication or proportions at all, probably. So let's go back and look at one of these that maybe proportions will help us out a lot with. Blue is going to be much trickier here. If we think about blue, 5 sixteenths, making a circle evenly divided into 16 pieces is kind of a pain, especially, you know, without measuring it all out anyway. So it's also going to be kind of tricky to figure out what 5 sixteenths of 360 degrees is without a proportion. So let's go back and set up a proportional equation for 5 sixteenths to figure out what number of degrees that should be in the circle for my pie chart. So just like before, I'm going to start with my 5 sixteenths as one of my fractions. A proportion is a fraction equals another fraction. So fraction 5 sixteenths equals another fraction. In this case, again, just like last time, I want to know how many degrees out of 360 5 sixteenths should be. So if, what is 5 sixteenths of a circle? How many degrees out of 360 should that rep be represented by? Just like before, too, <clears throat> I'm ready to cross multiply now. I've got my fraction equals my fraction and it's time to multiply across to solve this proportion. So d times 16 is 16d, and 5 times 360 is 1800, 1800. And don't forget to put that equal sign in the middle because that's what lets you know you've got an equation here. So 16d equals 1800. Again, from there, all we have to do is solve this one-step equation. I'm multiplying by 16, so I'll divide by 16 on both sides. Those go away. d is by itself. And d equals 1800 divided by 16. I go ahead and put this into my calculator. You should do the same. This is not stuff that I want you spending time solving by hand right now. Um, the answer ends up being 112 and 5 tenths. So in this case, the number of degrees of a circle that are 5 sixteenths of that circle is 112 and 5 tenths, or one half degree. 
When you're talking about pie charts, you're pretty much always going to be setting the equation up this way to figure out your pie chart. You'll always be dealing with a fraction of responses, and you'll always be asking how many degrees out of my 360 degree circle should that be. So here's a set of practice problems for you to practice with this. Um, do you like mustard? That's going to be our survey question. And here are your made up responses. Yes, seven, no, four people said no. Um, and then two people were unsure. So question one, I want you to tell me what was the fraction of responses for each answer? That should be pretty easy. And then number two, for each of those, I want you to use a proportion to calculate what degrees of a pie chart that would end up being. This is going to be one where you really have to use a proportion to do it correctly because these make a really unusual number of total responses. Um, you can round to the nearest hundredth or tenth if you want to. All right, go for it.